Uh, so welcome everyone. You see we've got the icebreakers and stuff out here. Uh, please answer. Let's see, can we answer for ourselves? Well, I, first I question. already voted for the team cat. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so this middle icebreaker, if you haven't done these from yesterday, well, it's a bit too late now. Hopefully you can follow, but we've specifically prepared our stuff yesterday so that way we can go straight to the main things now. So if you're not ready, well, there's not much we can do, but we'll help you the best we can. The worst bug you've ever solved. So Seema, what's the worst bug you've ever solved? Oh, that's 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 a hard one. <laughs> like, um, yeah, there's, I, yeah, I, I can't really say like, like there are things that are like super complicated, but I think the worst bugs are like these kinds of like when you have your own skin in the game. So, for example, when I was doing my master's thesis, uh. There were there were in in the code certain bugs that were like like I couldn't get the correct answers and, mm -hmm. and then I realized that okay like the signs were different and uh, like the certain uh, conventions uh, for like research papers they used to see a different mm -hmm. sign convention that the code mm -hmm. that I was using <laughs> uses and then I realized yeah. that I was I had wasted like multiple yeah. days. Uh, debugging this MPI code, and then I realized that okay, it's all about sign conventions, and these different people use different sign conventions, and yeah. the plus signs instead of minus signs, and our code uses it, it the other way around, and and that was yeah. worse, I think, because like you have your own skin in the game, and you feel like like mm -hmm. you you want it done now, <laughs> and you don't want to wait. <laughs> yeah. For me, I'd say something like. There have been multiple cases where I've had, I've been working to solve something and I realized there's some duplicated code or something and I'm not even modifying something that has any effect on the problem. So it's like, well, sometimes a short amount of time, but sometimes quite long. And then it gets to like, I just try to break the whole thing and realizes it still works. And I know something is very wrong there. Hmm. Yeah, I, re anyway. I, I remember um, some code that I did during my essentially bachelor's studies where I had a program that was running, but it produced complete garbage. <laughs> and it took me ages to find that there was a map and they had created a custom uh, comparator for the map. Mm -hmm. And that comparator always returned false. So yeah. you you always, regardless of what you were looking for in that map, you always mm -hmm. got the default element. Mm -hmm. And I came from Java, where if you get, uh, where you are, you're asking a map to, uh, to get something and it's mm -hmm. not there, you get null, so you will get an error. Mm -hmm. And then it was in C++, where you get the default element. Mm -hmm. And that took me <laughs> ages to figure out. <laughs> in, yeah. <sighs> yeah, the worst problems are uh, like there are problems that are like tricky to solve, and they might be bad, and they might be annoying, and they might be worse, like like mm -hmm. bad problems. But I'd say that the worst problems are the problems that make you feel like a fool, like or they like, uh, right, yeah, they, they like insult you to your face. Yeah, but I mean, I really think that people shouldn't feel bad about that because it happens to everyone. Oh, I remember. Okay. The best bug I've solved for someone else. Do you want to hear it? Go right ahead. So I was walking down the street outside my apartment, and someone came to me really panicked, saying, oh, help! can you help me? I can't get into my car. And I'm like, OK, how do I solve that? It's like, yeah, I have the remote, like the keyless enter here. I have to push the button really hard in order for it to register and unlock and I can't do it anymore. Can you try pushing the button? I'm like, okay, well, 
this is weird, but I'll try. So I pushed it a few times. And then I asked, why don't you put the key in the door and turn it to open it? And the person's like, oh, yeah, good idea. And did that and got in. So like I always use the story to just represent how technology is just hard. Like there's so many different things you're keeping track of. You can keep doing one thing. Sometimes asking someone for help for another set of eyes is the best way to solve something. And it's okay if it's like this. I mean, I've certainly done similar things before. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good one. Um, hmm, let's see. Not many bug uh, stories. Hmm. But the, we have a wide variety of users here. That's that's nice to hear. So we have a lot of bachelor students and master students, but also a lot of PhD students and postdocs. Mm -hmm. So and and even a few students of life, which is yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. Good position. You cannot you cannot ever be fired from that position. Yeah, <laughs> I like some people are cats. Yes, we need more cats here. Should we quickly, uh, do you think we should uh, go through like what we are going to be doing today or? Yeah, maybe we, we could, maybe we could wait the one minute yeah, for the, the one. hour. Hmm. Um, hmm. And, and throughout the remember that throughout the day, remember to add uh, questions to to the notes because, like yesterday, there were a lot of good comments, lots of good discussion there, and uh, lots of good, good feedback as well. So yeah. we we after the day ended, we skimmed through the whole section and, and checked what yeah. uh, kind of questions we had there and what sort of like feedback we got from you. So. Um, Hopefully today we'll have a lively discussion there as well. Yeah. I guess we can comment if you're not registered yet, please register. So of course the information is free. Anyone can watch without giving us personal data, but it does help our reporting some to be able to say we've had this many people register. Yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Of course, on the other way, the more people that register, then the fewer number of the lower percentage of people that are coming. But anyway, um, yes. So, oh, I had another story to tell, but maybe I'll tell that tomorrow about the video processing. So oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. One. Last night when I was working on this, I realized it's like, stuff on my computer, there's workflow automation, there's copying data to the cluster, there's running stuff with GPUs in order to make transcripts, there's copying it back, and so many different steps there. By the way, are the videos helpful to anyone? Like, does anyone even care about them? Yeah, maybe we should ask that as, a, that as a icebreaker tomorrow or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we try to throughout the course we try to like accommodate different kinds of like learning profiles because some people like to watch videos some people want to read material and read documentation and um, yeah there's different kinds of people so maybe the yeah. videos help some of you and that makes it all worth the while yeah okay should we get started so the general plan for today um we give a quick introduction, sort of recapping a little bit about what we did yesterday. We go over the basics of the queuing system. Then we get to a big, yes, there we go. Uh, maybe I'll share the screen. Mm. Yeah. There we go. So then day two, yeah. So we have these two introductory talks about clusters in your work and about Slurm. Then we go to the basically really hands-on stuff. We actually start running things on the cluster. 
So today we are still running only one processor jobs. And then, uh, but tomorrow is parallel. And then after the, after that at the end, we'll talk about the different software availability and data transfer and access and things like that. So we go in this order. We used to talk about all the software availability and data and things like that before getting to the how to run stuff. But people got a bit bored after hearing us talk about stuff for so long. So we sent you straight into things, even though you probably need it in the other order. And then there's half an hour at scheduled at the end for questions and answers. This might be reduced if the other stuff goes over, or it might be longer if it takes more time. We'll basically see. In the um, in the notes for as part of the icebreaker, I wrote down if anyone has real problems you'd like us to discuss, like even some code or script or something you'd like us to demonstrate, you can give it to us and maybe we can discuss it in the Q&A if we have time. I'll also mention right now that like throughout the day we'll be using the cluster and of course there's people from other universities than Alta University and mm -hmm. some of the mm -hmm. commands that we are going to be running they might need some small modifications uh, in other clusters so mm -hmm. in the exercise systems so if you have registered you should have the zoom links so you can pop up into the zoom uh, enter the breakout room where there are people from other universities helping. Uh, but you can also ask the question in the notes, which is even better because then other people will get the answer as well. Uh, and somebody will answer there uh, if there's some modifications that are needed to the examples uh, or exercises. So for, for running the, it on the other clusters, we try to make it as generic as possible, but there are always special, like, special things that you need to do small modifications, but the, the general underlying thing is is very general. But there's you need to like tweak it a bit when you do stuff on other places. But we try to yeah. accommodate everybody. So so ask the questions in in the notes. Yeah. So should we get started with about clusters and your work? So that can you scroll up so people can see the page title? Yes.